Uh, our next speaker, I, I got to tell you in the intro, I've known this guy for several from several years, a number of years. He was out at the central prison when we did a lot of work out there, and he was kind of our main guy. He was what's called an SSI who works for the chaplain, and he was our main recruiter. He was responsible for recruiting about half the guys that came to our programs. And uh, I always knew him as Bear was his nickname, and you can probably figure out which one he is up here, Bear. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I call, I get a list out of three or four guys, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta decide who's gonna be the speaker. And uh, this is in the last few days, actually. We, everything's pretty short-term in prison work. So anyway, that, that goes to show you, we do not, we do not coach these guys much. But they, they, this is their talks, not our talks. So I call Wesley Jenkins on the first name of the list. We're talking, and I said, uh, Wesley, you're gonna, I want a good frame. You're coming Friday. He said, John, the only reason I won't come Friday is if Jesus comes back between now and then. <laughs> the only, I said, well, that, that's the excuse I can handle. And, uh, then I went on to talk. I said, have you been there before? And he said, John, wait a minute. He said, this is Bear. I went, Bear? I know who you are. So I knew Bear. I knew his voice, but I didn't know Wesley Jenkins. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, I said, man, this is like old home week. You uh, said, hey, this is a good friend I'm talking to. So anyway, uh, great place. He's, he's, he's been out of prison only 90 days, and he'll tell you he spent a few, few years in there, and he'll tell you about that. Wesley Jenkins. Thank you, John Sayes. Thank you for this opportunity. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wesley Jenkins, a.k.a. Barrett. <laughs> and 91 days ago, there was no way you could have told me that I'd be standing in a room full of people at a Bridges to Life banquet, let alone allowed to sit at the second table on the front row and eat the food. <laughs> you see, for 20 years, I was a cook in PVCJ for wardens like Warden Martin and uh, Warden Wesson and the Warden, uh, oh wow, bunch of wardens. <laughs> I used to kind of cater these events. I'd cook all the food and we'd stand in the back and they would uh, let us eat afterwards, if you know what I mean. <laughs> to tell you a little bit about myself, my name again is Wesley Jenkins and I was in prison for 27 years. 26 years, 11 months, 28 days. I was 515527. I came into the Bridges to Life program in 2009. In December of 2008, this guy named John Shade shows up at the Central Unit Good Shepherd Chapel and he's telling us about this program he got and he said, you need to take this program. Well, I had a celly that had already taken the program that told me to go down there for that meeting. So I went down there and I listened to his story and then he showed the video. And on the video, he told a story about the death of his sister. But I already knew about the death of his sister because the lady that perpetrated the crime was my sister's best friend, Erica Shepard. This young lady used to come sleep over at my house. I knew who she was. John and I were connected. So I go to the first meeting of this program and this lady comes in and she's in the room today and I'm not going to call her name, but if she wants to identify herself, she can. She comes in and she tells me this story about how a man had killed her daughter, her eight-year-old daughter, her only child. And then she said at the trial, after he was convicted, she stood up and she went to him and she said, I forgive you. And I cried uncontrollably because I couldn't fathom that type of love. I didn't love myself, so how can I love someone else? And surely how could somebody love me enough to forgive me for the crime that I had committed? See, I took something that I couldn't give. Only God gives life. So how could somebody love me that much? And though she wasn't talking to me, she was talking about me. And I went home back to my cubic that night and I thought about what she said. And I said that I had to have this program. 
I got to go through this thing to see what type of people these are that could love someone like myself. I took the program and I learned accountability, I learned acceptance, I learned responsibility. I talked about the shame and the guilt that I had. I dug deep in myself and I wrote a letter to my dead father who I felt like I let down because I didn't have to come to prison. I wasn't one of those guys that was raised in the ghetto. I had a mom and dad. I lived, I lived in suburbia. I chose to be bad. I chose to do what I did because I didn't love me. Someone asked me, what, what changed me? Well, Christ changed me. Christ changed me from the inside. I had to be washed Amen. from the inside. No program you take in prison changes your life. Let's get that straight now. You change when you say, I don't want to feel like this no more. I don't want to be like this no more. When I tell somebody today, I love you, I'm effectively saying I would die for you because Christ is my role model. He stood, he died on the cross for me. That changed me. You men and you women that came into the prison day after day, week after week, after you got off your jobs and then you came down there, you changed me because you showed me the Christ-like love, the agape love that went beyond the talk that changed me. And ultimately, one day, somehow, some way, I forgave myself. I forgave myself for my mistakes. I forgave myself for all the things that I'd done to destroy my life. I woke up one morning, just a few days ago, Thanksgiving Day. For the first time in 27 years, I woke up and I didn't see an inmate. I didn't see no guards, didn't see no bars, didn't see nothing blue, nothing white. I was laying in my grandmother's bed in Palestine, Texas. And I said, thank you, God, because you're real. You kept me because you said you could, and you did what you said. I'll close with this. Carl was one of my volunteers in my group, and he wrote in all of our books at our graduation, acta non verba. For those of you that don't speak Greek, or Latin, or whatever the heck it is, those words simply mean this, actions, not words. Actions, not words. This program is about action, ladies and gentlemen, not words. Those of you that come out to the units, I bow to you because your actions have helped change my life. Thank you.